This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Tuesday, December 3rd. So glad you could join us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Government could soon introduce an electronic payment system for child maintenance. Word of this from Attorney General Dale Marshall, who says government is in the process of preparing a Child Justice Act as it seeks to bring several pieces of legislation up to date. The Attorney General was leading the debate on the Family Law Bill 2019 in the lower chamber today. He argued that the magistrate's court is still dealing with family issues in a way that is outdated. He pointed out the court only hears maintenance matters and the process payment is currently awkward. This is a perfect opportunity now, sir, for us to look at how we deal with a whole set of other family arrangements as they come into contact with and sometimes come into conflict with the law and bring them into a more understanding, a more accommodating 21st century. So our, our courts, our magistrates courts, sir, still have to deal with family issues in a way that is not appropriate for modern Barbados, and it has to change. Opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley charges that families in Barbados are under threat, and he is blaming much of it on the country's economic difficulties. Atherley was speaking in Parliament this morning during debate on the Family Law Miscellaneous Provisions Bill of 2019. There are those dynamics internal to family life with which we're very familiar that constitute in part the source of such threat. But a lot of what threatens family life in Barbados is to be located as a source in the economic experience that we've gone through in the past several years, and which we're still passing through. Atherley also suggested that Barbadian families are being threatened by what he called an alternative lifestyle movement. There's also a dynamic which I consider to be quite sinister, and that is the values deconstruction agenda of the alternative lifestyle movement. And we have to be acutely aware of this as a nation if we are to preserve family as an institution and family life as we have always desired it so to be, as not only a primary and foundational unit for all that we become, but that context in which our nation's children are birthed and raised and in which they grow up to be citizens of this country. In other news, this Tuesday, Prime Minister Mia Motley was out and about mingling with the country's youth today. As part of the National Consciousness Conversation, she visited the Frederick Smith Secondary School, where she spent two hours engaging with fourth and fifth form students. According to the Government Information Service, the children shared their plans for the future with the Prime Minister, saying where they would like to see Barbados in the next 10 years. The Prime Minister also shared some life lessons with them and encouraged them to make their plans and work towards achieving them. It's the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and President of the Barbados Council of the Disabled, Kerry Ann Eiffel, says members of that community must take action to ensure that their rights and concerns are fully recognized, as outlined under the Millennium Development Goals. She was addressing a workshop hosted by the Council in partnership with the United Nations Development Program at UN House. There's regional and international news after this short break. 
this festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume reveler, music, and more. It's festive Friday. It's festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Barbados Today, news you can trust. On to regional news now. In Jamaica, amid rising crime, the Independent Commission of Investigations is making recommendations on how to tackle criminal activity even as that body faces criticisms of its own work. We get more in this report from Television Jamaica. Indicom Commissioner Terence Williams says, like all Jamaicans, he too is concerned about the crime situation. However, he insists that his job is not a hindrance to crime fighting. In fact, Mr. Williams made three recommendations that he believes will help the police to be more effective. Well, one solution I think we need to have more technology, we need to have more CCTV in public spaces. There needs to be a great expenditure in Jamaica on CCTV. That's the a, that's a first um, thing that I think we need to do with the force. He says good quality CCTV coverage will help ensure that justice is served. Secondly, he says the force is lumbering along because of unaccountability at the local or community level. Instead of a national police service commission, we need to have parish police authorities where citizens can hold their police superintendent for the area responsible for, for targets, men on the street, patrols, etc. And also um, support the police because they, know, they, know, they will now feel a part of policing in their area. On the world scene, a report from Democrats says U.S. President Donald Trump solicited foreign interference to boost his chances of re-election next year, undermined national security, and ordered an unprecedented campaign to obstruct Congress. We get the details in this report from Reuters. House Democrats leading the impeachment inquiry into Donald Trump on Tuesday released a report making their case against the president saying he abused the powers of his office for personal political gain. Based on 100 hours of deposition testimony from 17 witnesses, the report concluded that Trump sought interference from a foreign power into the 2020 election when he tried to pressure Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky into opening politically motivated investigations. Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff said the evidence was indisputable. Uh, it involves a scheme in which Donald Trump withheld official acts, a White House meeting, as well as hundreds of millions of dollars of needed military assistance in order to compel that power to deliver two investigations that he believed would assist his reelection campaign. Those investigations were into Joe Biden and the unfounded theory that Ukraine meddled in the 2016 U.S. election. These people are deranged. Ahead of the reports released, Trump at a NATO summit in London blasted the Democrats. I think the Democrats should be ashamed of themselves. I think Adam Schiff is a deranged human being. And someday, hopefully in a very long distant future, you'll have a Democrat president, you'll have a Republican House, and they'll do the same thing because somebody picked an orange out of a refrigerator and you don't like it, so let's go and impeach him. 
Democrats also concluded in the report that Trump obstructed the impeachment inquiry by instructing witnesses and government agencies to ignore subpoenas. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook, and sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Good evening.